In the introductory section of this lecture on Ayn Rand's objectivism, we spoke about the entrepreneurism explicit and implicit in her philosophy. I next want to turn uh, more formally to an aesthetic point about Rand's romanticism, a political point about her advocacy of liberalism, and an ethical point about her advocacy of egoism. All of these uh, feed into explicitly her advocacy of a certain approach to education, uh, and they also, I think, are a nice bridge between education and the more fundamental branches of philosophy, that is to say, her views in metaphysics and epistemology, and her understanding of human nature that support these themes, and then ultimately her entrepreneurial approach to life and education. First, in uh, Romanticism, Rand, of course, was first a novel uh, and in terms of aesthetic theory, her, her approach to literature is uh, the, the romantic approach. But romanticism also has a, a philosophical content to it. And there are two themes in Rand's uh, approach that are, are uh, important here. One is uh, the concept that she calls man worship. And that is the idea that human beings really have awesome potential, right? Each and every one of us, that is to say, if we are born with normal human capacities. And that the fundamental thing is uh, respect and admiration for the potential that every human being has. Now, certainly when we are children uh, and younger people, we have role models and we have heroes that we look up to. Hopefully those are our parents, hopefully those are our teachers, and certainly as we start to get a little bit older, we start to be struck by the awesome things that human beings at their best can accomplish. Uh, so if we think, for example, of the great athletes and uh, how they can inspire us with their performance at the Olympic Games, in world championships, in various sports, and so forth, it's almost an aesthetic experience about the awesomeness of human potential that we can get there. Or if we think about uh, the, uh, the achievements of people in the sciences, people like Isaac Newton and Galileo and Albert Einstein, how those can be uh, exemplars of uh, the awesomeness of human achievement. Or people in engineering right, or in industrial production, right, or in the arts, the great artists who can transport us, the musicians like Beethoven, Mozart, Tchaikovsky, uh, sculptors like Michelangelo, painters like Leonardo, and so forth. The point uh, is a general point that human beings, all of us, at least in pr principle, have this great potential, and a fundamental, uh, both aesthetic and philosophical point is a reverence, right, for the potential that human beings have. Uh, Rand then says that this becomes an important part of our responsibility, certainly as parents, right, and as teachers, cultivating in students an awareness and a reverence for the human potential. Quote, the man worshippers, in my sense of the term, are those who see man's highest potential and strive to actualize it. Those dedicated to the exaltation of man's self-esteem and the sacredness of his happiness on earth, unquote. Now, the other uh, important concept here is what Rand calls the benevolent universe premise. Uh, and this is a slightly metaphorical, right, formulation. Uh, the idea here is that the universe, right, or the world or reality is open, right, to, uh, to human achievement. Not necessarily say that the universe is explicitly on our side, right, the universe doesn't t take sides, it's indifferent, right, in that sense, but that there's a fit between human capacity and reality. That the universe is open to human beings if they conceptualize their understanding of the world correctly, if they formulate their values well, if they work hard, that they can achieve, right, awesome things in the world, right, the world is open to it in that sense. The contrast concept would be the uh, malevolent universe. Uh, and sometimes we can just say there's a difference between people who are optimists and people who are pessimists. But here we're talking about the universe, right? What's out there? And there are some people, of course, who internalize both uh, intellectually and or emotionally the idea that the world is against them, right? That the world is hostile to human intent, to human value seeking, and so forth. That no matter what people do, the universe has things stacked against them in some sneaky way or explicit way, their plans will be foiled, and that of course is profoundly demoralizing. Uh, so Rand wants to argue that the proper metaphysically normal attitude toward the universe is to see the universe as, uh, as being on one's side, so to speak, and uh, internalizing intellectually and emotionally the sense that the world is open to the achievement of your happiness and goals in this world. Quote, the inability to believe in the power 
or the triumph of evil. No matter what corruption one observes in one's immediate background, one is unable to accept it as normal, permanent, or metaphysically right. One feels this injustice or terror or falsehood or frustration or pain or agony is the exception in life, not the rule. One feels certain that somewhere on earth, even if not anywhere in one's surroundings or within one's reach, a proper human way of life is possible to human beings and justice matters." Unquote. 